Hi class, welcome to this video. We're going to be doing some concepts in Finale. We're going to be building diatonic chords, then building chord sequences from them. At the same time, we're going to be learning about certain baseline concepts and reviewing how to do drums in Finale. It's important that you review video one to get to be reminded of all the shortcuts and settings that allow you to use Finale in an efficient way. Um, things like get all the palettes, main tool palette, single entry palette, um, go to the simple entry menu and set up particular shortcuts and settings, deselect those, choose laptop shortcuts, go to the um, keyboard setting under the Apple under system preferences and choose this top, check that top box so that you can use your keys as number keys to create note values and function keys to create intervals. Um, here's I'm hitting the number keys now. If you look at my note that will appear on there, there's a whole note. That's seven. If I hit six, it becomes a half note. I hit five, it becomes a quarter. Four becomes an eighth. Sixteen becomes a, a three becomes a sixteenth. So that's your numbers and then your interval keys, your, sorry, your uh, uh, function keys become intervals. So if I hit three, I get a third. Hit it again, I get another third. Okay, that's all in video one, so you should review that if you forgot some of that. Okay, moving on. So the first thing we need to do is build up our scale. So you just simply put in all your scale notes and whole notes. Then you're going to build up your chords by practicing using the function key. So you've got your D minor, just hit F3 twice. And you've got your triad. But move your, um, with the arrow key, you can move over to select the next note. The arrows are right and left, and very useful. And then hit F3 again twice, and you'll get your triads. Once you're done building up all your triads in root position, um, go to the chord tool. The chord tool looks like this. And click once above the chord you want to label. And then simply type in the name of the chord with a capital letter, capital E, and then the minus symbol for minor. Hit return and you've just entered that chord symbol. When it's a major chord, all you have to do is hit the capital letter, and that's it. That is assumed to be major. You don't have to write M-A-J or anything. So finish labeling all your chords. When you have all your triads in place, then you're gonna put in your baseline concept, and our baseline concept comes from this song and many others. Listen to the bass, notice what it's doing. You dedicated, you took the time. Was a long time. Here how the bass is played constant eighth notes. So that's the technique that we're emulating here. Constant eighth notes on the root of the chord. Then for the drums, just as a way to practice, you can redo the drum part, even though you could just copy it. You could just go like this, Command C and then Command V. Okay. But just to remind yourself how to do them. All right, so once you finish this aspect of it, you'll have all your diatonic chords in order. You'll have Constant eighth note bass, and you'll have drums. Then you come down here and you apply that same concept to this chord sequence. One, six minor, four, five, one. So you put in the chords, you voice lead the chords, which these are not up here. These are not voice lead. But you put you voice lead them down here. You know how to do that from previous activities. Then you put in constant eighth notes in the bass on the root, and you put in your drum pattern. So then you'll have one, six, four, five, one in a major key voice led with constant eighth notes. Then you come over here and you complete your A minor triads by stacking up the notes. Put in your chord symbols, remember how to do that. Then using the chord tool. Then you know, get all your uh, constant eighth notes and drum pattern and all that. Then go down here and create the equivalent of one a six, four, five in minor, which is one flat six, because that's the diatonic chord, four minor and five minor to one, and get that all working and then listen to what that sounds like. Okay, at that point you will have created two musical ideas, one in C major and one in its relative minor of A minor. Then next you're going to come over here and we're going to do all this in G major and its relative minor, which is E minor. So the first thing we need to do is format, so this is a new shortcut for you. So if our measures are not, what we want to do is copy what's over here. So I'm just going to purposely mess this up for a minute 
and then get it and then put it back the way it needs to be so that you learn how to do this. Okay, so what we want is we want um, a uh, section of, of music where there's eight measures on a line, and then we want another section where there's five measures on a line, and we want to do that twice. So this is the way we do it. We go to the beginning of the section that we want to manipulate, click on it. I'm in the selection tool, by the way, which you get to by hitting Escape. Then I'm going to go to the eighth measure after that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'm going to shift click right there to select everything. Okay. Then I'm going to do the following shortcut, which is very helpful. Command, Shift, M. And this little window opens up. And I'm going to put a number in that window. I'm going to put the number 8 to tell it to put 8 measures on a line. <clears throat> so take these measures, put 8 of them on one line. And I say OK. And now it's done that. Then I'm going to go down here, and I want to have five measures on this line. So I, I, I select the first measure. I go to the fifth measure away at the bottom stave. I do Shift-click to select the ball. Command-Shift-M. I get my window. I hit 5, hit Return. And now I've got eight measures here, five measures there. Then you do the same thing over here. Find eight measures. Shift-click. Command Shift M, eight, and one more time, select Command Shift to select all. I mean, Shift click to select all. Command Shift M to get my window. Hit the number five. Hit return. And oops, I didn't. I didn't select five measures. Let's try that again. Command Shift M, five, and hit return. And now we have everything formatted correctly so that we can copy this whole thing. So now we're going to build, we could copy and paste and transpose, but we're going to do it um, more uh, gradually because we want to learn how to do a few things. So we want to do this in G, so we need to set the key signature for G. So we select here and we go to the end and we shift click to select all this section and we want all this section to be in G. So the way we're going to do that is use the key signature tool. Now you know what the key signature of G is, right? Because we've been going over it in class. Yes, that's right, one sharp. So you double click on it. I'm sorry, let me show you how to. You choose the key signature tool, which looks like that. Then you double click on it. It becomes engaged. Right now, because there's no sharps or flats, you can see we're in C major. This little slider will allow you to go, when you go upward, you'll get more sharps. When you go downward, you'll get more flats. So we need to go up. So I'm just going to click once above. And there we go. We've got G major. And it will affect all these measures that we have chosen. And if there were notes, they would be transposed. But there aren't. So it's, uh, doesn't, it's a moot point. So I said OK. And now I've got a G major key signature. Notice that there's no key signature in the drums. <clears throat> And now what I want you to do is emulate everything that you just um, experienced over here in G major and A minor. I mean in G major and E minor, the relative minor. So you're going to take whole notes and create a G major scale, etc., etc. Then you're going to build up your chords, make triads just like before. Then you're going to do constant aphids in the bass, and you're going to copy over the drums. And then you're going to label your, your chords with the chord symbol. Uh, the chord G major. This is going to be 2 minor, which of course is A minor now, and so on. And then you're going to put in your Roman numerals. And the way you do that, if you remember from the first video, is with this expression tool, MF. And you get on there, you double you click, and a window double click, sorry, a window opens up, you choose Roman numerals, and you can find them there. But I'm reminding you that there are shortcuts in this template. If you hold down the number one when you're in this tool, you will get one major. And if you hold down two, you'll get two minor, three, you'll get three minor, and so on. When you get to the when you get to the minor key, you'll need one minor, two diminished, and so on. The way you get those is by pressing down on the letters, which are right below those numbers. So the letter that's right below 1 is Q. So you press on Q, 
and you'll get 1 minus. Uh, press on W, which is right below 2, and you'll get 2 diminished. Press on E, which is right below, right below 3, and you'll get flat 3 major and so on. So you're going to go through, construct your G major scale, all your chords, constant eighth notes, drums. Then you're going to go down here and construct your chord sequence 1, 6, 4, 5, 1 in G major now. And down here you're going to do 1, flat 6, 4 minor, 5 minor, 1 in E minor. And basically recreate what you have done in C major. You're going to do the whole thing in G major and E minor over there and then that's that will be when you're you've completed the project okay have fun with that and have that ready for next class bring it to class on your computer I just want to remind you something about playback uh, when you use the playback controls you can click that little triangle to open up and get different options you should have it pre-selected to do the leftmost measure and to play to the end of the piece of music because otherwise it will stop at the 30 second measure um, and then you can Play back by hitting this, but the only issue with playing back with um, uh, with the, with this playback uh, menu is that uh, it's it's a little bit clumsy sometimes. So there's a shortcut. <clears throat> so you can play back with this um, and so on. Um, but sometimes you want to just play back one measure or just check out one or two measures here and there And this is a little bit time-consuming to use this So you, the, the other way you can do playback is to click this and turn it and get rid of it and then what uh, When you're in the selection tool, which again is like that and the way you get there is by hitting escape you can be um, You can uh, Select a measure and then just hit the space bar and click and it will play from that measure or you know here or whatever okay and that's really useful the other thing you can do is hold down option and spacebar and then you'll play back wherever your cursor is and it will play back at the rate that your cursor moves so I could start here and just listen to that one chord and then I can move along at whatever rate I want so it's a good way to check sounds and so on. Um, so that's playback shortcuts. But in order to do that, you have to turn off the playback window. You have to have it deselected.